following program is a production of Ho'ike Kauai Community Media. The Ho'ike Weekly has been made possible in part by the Rice Street Business Association, the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, and Violi Properties. Aloha Kauai, I'm Trisha Allen, and this is the Ho'ike Weekly. All right, Kauai, it's news flash time. Our island may be small, but there's a lot happening around here and you have things to do. So let's give you the latest in a short and entertaining way so you can go about your week informed. First up, some exciting news for Kauai residents. The Hawaii Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, or the DCCA, has just improved Hawaiian Telecom's expansion of its cable services to our island. So what does this mean for you? Well, first off, you'll have more choices when it comes to cable providers. With Hawaiian Telecom entering the market, there's going to be more competition. This could lead to better prices and improved services for everyone. Plus, Hawaiian Telecom is bringing in some awesome technology, using digital tech to offer a wide range of programming and services. So you'll have plenty more variety to choose from. Now let's talk about what you'll actually get to watch. One of the coolest parts is that local public stations like Ho'ike will have the option to broadcast in high definition. That means clearer, crisper, and more enjoyable viewing experiences for you. And it doesn't stop there. Hawaiian Telecom is rolling out brand new all digital video platform. Think of it as combining traditional TV with the latest apps and customizable content. It's like having everything you love in one place right at your fingertips. But it's not just about entertainment. Hawaiian Telecom is also committed to enhancing community services. They're setting up dedicated channels for public, educational, and government content, so you'll have access to academic lectures, cultural events, emergency broadcasts, and more. It's all about keeping you informed and engaged with what's happening in your community. Oh, and here's something super useful. Hawaiian Telecom will provide 2,000 public service announcements. These will come from the governor, lieutenant governor, state legislature, county council, and the Department of Education, as well as the University of Hawaii. So you'll always be in the loop about important information. For more information on that, including all relevant documents and related filings, you can go to Hawaiian Telecom's website. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, the link is in the show notes. We've also put it in the notes if you're watching on YouTube. Last week, Unit L in Koke'e was closed as a precaution due to the ongoing wildfire suppression efforts out there. Well, as of yesterday, August 1st, the DLNR has opened it again, so happy hunting. The Department of Parks and Recreation announced that the Kapa'a and Waimea swimming pools have resumed their regular hours as of Tuesday, July 30th. Pool hours are as follows. Closed on Sundays and Mondays, but on Tuesdays, you can come in for open swim from 10.30 a.m. till 3.45 p.m. On Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, those schedules are pretty similar. They have adult swim in the morning from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And then open swim from 9.30 a.m. to 3.45 a.m. On Saturdays, they start with adult swim from 9.30 a.m. till 11.30 a.m. in the morning. And then they switch to open swim until 4.30 p.m. For questions or more information, you can call the Department of Parks and Rec at 808-241-4460. You can also call the Waimea Swimming Pool, 808-338-1271, or visit them online, kawaii.gov backslash parks. DLNR's Legacy Land Conservation Program is taking grant applications from state agencies, counties, and nonprofit land conservation organizations for fiscal year 2025. These grants are to preserve and protect land through acquisition that has natural, environmental, recreational, scenic, cultural, agricultural production, or historic value. 
This includes park and trail systems that provide access to such land. Approximately $6.7 million in grant funds is expected to be available for award through a competitive process that includes consultation with state agencies and legislators, investigations, and recommendations from the DLNR's Legacy Land Conservation Commission, and approvals from the Board of Land and Natural Resources, as well as the governor. Applications are due October 11th. For detailed information, visit the program's website or contact the program office via email, legacyland at hawaii.gov, or call them, 808-586-0291. A new Kauai Public Charter Middle and High School is coming to the North Shore of Kauai in 2025. Namahana School is set to make a significant impact as the first public tuition-free middle and high school on the North Shore of Kauai. This new institution will provide families with a convenient educational option close to home, reducing the need for long commutes that take away from children's rest and leisure time. With Namahana School nearby, students can participate more easily in after-school programs and other enrichment activities, fostering greater involvement from both the students and the parents in their education. In collaboration with Big Picture Learning, Namahana School offers an innovative educational model. This approach allows students to deepen their connection with the land and its resources, strengthening ties within their communities and developing critical skills applicable to real-world challenges. By addressing these needs, Namahana School aims to benefit the entire community from Keiki to Kupuna. For more information, you can visit their website, namahana.org. Ho'ike recently had the chance to sit down with the head of the Kauai Fire Department, Chief Michael Gibson, to talk about the recent wildfires that have been affecting our island. These fires have had a huge impact on our communities, and our firefighters have been working tirelessly to keep everybody safe. In our conversation, Chief Gibson gives some valuable insights about the current situation, the challenges the firefighting teams are facing, and what's being done to prevent future wildfires. Plus, he offered some great tips on how we can all stay informed and prepared. Take a look. Aloha, welcome. We are at the Lihui Fire Station with Chief Michael Gibson. Thank you for taking the time out of your day, Chief. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Especially with how busy you've been lately. These past couple weeks have been pretty active. Um, lots of fires, some set intentionally and some not. How can you tell the difference between an accidental uh, wildfire and one that's not so accidental? Okay. Well, our investigators will go out to determine the, the cause um, and the origin of the fire, they can. Um, and when it's possible, the, the patterns can lead them to where the fire started. And when they get to that location, um, they try to rule out certain things. You know, okay. if it was a, a residence, um, one was it set intentionally? And if it was, is there any evidence to show that? Okay. Matches or some flammable liquid? Um, if it's not intentional, was it accidental? Could it have been um, electrical outlet arcing, malfunction, um, overheating of a, a battery being charged? Mm. Uh, and there's times when we cannot determine the fire and they are just simply determined um, to be undetermined, um, which leaves the case open. And we can, if we get more evidence or information in the future, we can always um, be more precise and rule out or rule what the cause was. Okay. That's good information to know. Now, you have specific vehicles to help with large brush fires like the ones that have happened recently. One of them is behind us. If you don't mind, could you tell us the difference between this vehicle and just, you know, the other kind of regular fire trucks that we see yeah, pulling out of here? Certainly. So, Kauai, we have eight fire stations. Okay. Uh, each fire station uh, basically has a primary fire engine. Um, our station in Fort Kaloa has a, a fire engine with a ladder on it. Okay. Uh, but all the other fire engines, uh, which normally station here, has a, um, a pump, um, a complement of different size hoses for fighting different fires, and a water tank. And the water tank on this engine is 750 gallons. Um, sometimes that's enough to put out one room of a fire or a car fire, but um, the fire hydrants that we have in our um, area um, give us an unlimited supply of water. So we do like to hook up to the hydrant if they're available. 
When we don't have a fire hydrant available, we have apparatus like this behind us, um, which is a water tender or named a tanker. Um, this can carry 2,000 gallons of water. Ooh, that's quite a bit more. <laughs> substantially more. So we, um, uh, this past year and working with our other firefighters and the uh, other two departments uh, in the valley or the island here, we also have PMRF okay. on the base and we have ARF, which is a crash fire at Lihui Airport. Um, they have larger apparatus that carries thousands of gallons of water. Um, our mayor and his administration and our county council have voted this year to support us to buy two more water tenders like this. Wow. And so this will give us the ability to not just have one centrally in the island, um, which takes a while to get to the west side or the east side. So we'll, I'm sorry to yep. interrupt you, but is yep. this the one, uh, the only one so far that we've got and we're going to get two more? Correct. Okay. All right. So the, the final locations for all three is to be determined, but we'll place them uh, closer to the areas where they're needed the most and where the most remote from a water source. Okay. Um, but yeah, having the ability to have um, more than one uh, will provide continuous operation. So recently with our Koke fire mm -hmm. and the Hanapepe and Kamakani fires, we, um, we have a community that lends um, a lot of support to us. We cannot do this alone. So as I mentioned, the other fire departments here, PMRF and Crash Fire, uh, our county has Public Works, Rose Division that has water tenders that'll show up to the scenes and support us. We have our uh, private large landowners um, that'll show up to the scene and help us. There's too many to name or I would name them. Uh, we have our private contractors that have water tenders and bulldozers that, that show up and help us on these scenes. And um, I just can't say enough how thankful we are to have um, everybody's efforts when it comes to battling these fires that we just cannot handle by ourselves. Yeah, that one in Koke was pretty scary. We could see it from our driveway yeah. um, and it was incredible at night. So that said, I have to ask, what can people do to maybe prevent wildfires who live in a dry area? Because I live on the west side. So um, what are some things that just everyday people can do to prevent an accidental wildfire in their area? So a few ways. So on the short term uh, is to be vigilant. Um, what helps us the best is the earliest detection notification of a fire. Um, so even if you're not sure, you see smoke or sell, smell smoke, we ask you to call 911 and get us out there to take a look. Uh, we are, we have been able to lately to put in some artificial intelligence technology. There are some um, sensors, they're called N5 is the, the company that makes them. Uh, but they just look like a solar panel with a radar. It's not a camera, but it's kind of a radar instrument uh -huh. that can sense um, the beginning um, stages of a fire. It can read the smoke signature. Okay. And we'll place these in a series of three or four in a certain area. They can cover about a two or three square mile area. And they can send us an immediate notification that a, a fire is starting in that area. That's what was uh, monitoring the hotspots in Kamakani, right? Correct. And Koke. Yeah. That's right. I read about that. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know how those worked. Yeah, so when we leave the scene, um, on a big fire, we never want to like to leave, you know, but sure. there is a point we have to leave. Uh, we'll come back. Sometimes we'll post a fire watch. Okay. Um, this could be done either the fire department or a security company that's trained to do that. Um, in our case, we have these extra sensors that are deployable. So we can leave them on the scene and drive away with the peace of mind that if the fire does rekindle or start up, we'll be notified right away. Wow. So to jump to the other things that, that um, residents can do to protect themselves um, is uh, we have a, our website, um, okay. kfd um, at kawaii.gov, mm -hmm. uh, with tips how to do this. So it's creating a defensible space around your home. Okay. So we'll talk about different zones, like from the house, a few feet out, we don't want uh, clutter or debris. So if we have uh, dead brush, could be hazardous, and it just acts as kindling. Mm. So if you think of a big fire, you're trying to start a campfire, you can't light just the log on fire, right? right. And that's right. your home is that big log. Okay. You need kindling. Sure. So if you have kindling around your house and a big fire moves through or embers fly from a close by fire, it's going to start the kindling fire, not your house. Got it. So given time, the kindling is going to start on fire and now it can get your house on fire. So we want to create a defensible space. Our um, information on our website talks about how to do that and move mm -hmm. out, you know, 30 to 100 feet from your house. Um, home hardening is another thing that you'll learn on the yeah. website. So home hardening is um, if you have open vents to your attic, you know, providing a, a screen mesh or a metal mesh, you know, for ventilation, but to not allow sparks to travel through mm. or embers. So 
When we have high winds, and this was um, what happened at the Lahaina fire, okay. the winds were blowing that day 80 mile an hour plus. And when we have winds that high, it can take embers from a burning fire the size of golf balls and blow them up to two miles away. Wow. So that's why it's important that your house doesn't have that kindling around it. Yeah. Um, other things that we, we ask, and it is required by law, is that hazardous brush has to be cut 30 feet from a structure. Okay. So that's the defend, defendable space so the fire department can show up. And we have a boundary, we have an area that we can defend the structure from. Mm. So our recent um, fire in Hanapepe, the start in Hanapepe Heights, mm -hmm. there was a freshly cut fire break, um, mm. at least 30 feet, if not bigger, that our firefighters were allowed to go in, set up and make a stance and protect all those homes on Moya Road. Good thing too. Yep. Okay. All right. And if you don't mind telling us the website again, where people can go to learn ways to prevent brush fires and keep their homes and the island safe. Sure. So that's our, our county uh, of Kauai website, kauai.gov. Um, go to the fire department webpage and that information will be uh, easy to see and displayed right on that page. Perfect. Thank you so much again for your time. I know you're a very busy you're man and there's a lot going on on the island. So oh. We appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank nope. you. We get the message out to, for everybody to be safe and vigilant. Um, that's that's what we care most about. Thank Us you. Us too. Mahalo again, Chief, for your time. We know you're very busy and we appreciate it. The weekend begins soon. And there's never a shortage of things to do around here, so let's take a quick look at what events you can look forward to in the upcoming week. The American Heart Association Heart Walk takes place at Puakea Golf Course this Saturday at 7 a.m. This annual event helps fund scientific advances to prevent and treat heart disease and stroke. Info on this event can be found on the Hawaii Pacific Health webpage. The YWCA of Kauai is gearing up for their 17th annual Never Forget Sandy G Golf Tournament on Sunday, August 4th. This year's event promises to be unforgettable, offering a day of camaraderie and community support on the greens. The tournament aims to raise funds for critical initiatives to eliminate family violence, provide treatment and support individuals in need. The funds raised will benefit various programs, including safe shelters, a 24-7 hotline, and counseling for survivors of violence. The event will also feature a silent auction with donated items, further supporting these important causes. Info on that event can be found at the YWCAKauai.org website under their events feed. Hewa'i Kauai celebrates its 22nd anniversary with a vibrant Tahitian dance and drumming competition at Kapa'a Beach Park on August 3rd and 4th. This annual event, which draws over 2,500 attendees each day, showcases performers from all ages and all over the world, including Hawaii, the mainland, Taiwan, and Japan. They display their talent through solo and group dances that bring Tahitian legends to life. On Saturday, solo competitions span from young children to adults with categories in traditional oatea and drumming, while group performances occur on Sunday. Additionally, the Isiva Fire Knife crew will host their Poafi Samoan Fire Knife competition on Saturday evening. The festival also features vendors with Tahitian and Pacific Island gifts, foods, and Polynesian craft demonstrations. Ho'ike was able to meet up with some of the competitors for both events last week, and boy, was it a spectacle. Take a look. Aloha Kako, my name is Agnes Haohao. I am the Vice President of the Hewa e Kauai. Uh, it's the same event we put on every year, first weekend of August at Kapa'a Beach Park. Uh, this year is going to be the 3rd and 4th of August. And we also have the Poafi Fire Knife Competition Saturday evening that follows. It's the 22nd annual one this year. Something hopefully we could keep going uh, to kind of keep the knowledge, culture, dance, drumming, music alive. And then um, with the collaboration with the Samoan Fire Knife on Saturday nights, it's kind of keeping in tune with like the Polynesian um, culture 
and music and dance and everything like that. So it's very special being in Hawaii, part of the Polynesian Triangle. Yorana, my name is Nick Kaneko and the Ra'atira for Tumawana. We are competing at the Hewei Koi. We're entering one category um, known as the Aparima category. Currently, we have approximately 40 to 50 dancers. Ooh, actually, our youngest one is six years old and our oldest, I believe we just had a 50th birthday party. Yeah. My name is Ryan Samuel. I dance for the group Tumuana under the direction of Kumu Nick Kaneakua. And um, we are preparing for Heva, making costumes, training hard, and uh, just getting ready. Uh, we practice two, two to three hours twice a week. It's always special, you know, bringing the culture and uh, sharing it with everybody, everybody is always special for us. My favorite part is making the costumes. My name is Hoku. Um, I've been dancing for Tumuana for about 12 years. Right now we're preparing for Heva. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, costume making, a lot of new dancers this year. So, I mean, we have a lot to look forward to and just prepare. We do have like our older dancers who have been dancing for a long time, you know, so I mean it's kind of easy when we have them helping, you know, with everyone. Heva is just like our, our showcase basically, something that like brings us like those three, four minutes of just dancing is something that we just look forward to all year long and like we prepare for, you know, like it's just us showing what we do, you know, everything that we do, <laughs> that we love to do basically. So this is the only thing that we, my dancers look forward to Kauai as far as competition for the past, since maybe 2009 or 2010. Talofa, this is Kamo with ICVA Fire Knife Crew. So we'll be having our pull off the Fire Knife competition, August 3rd. Are you ready? Am I ready? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm ready. My name is Paul Mike Kai, Jordan, Libra Harris, and that's for about 10 years. And you're ready for the competition. And I'm ready. I'm ready for the competition. Right now. <laughs> My name is uh, Kaisen Lenikola Woodward, and I've been dancing for at least eight to nine years. What's your favorite part about dancing? Uh, just be able to represent God because He's been guiding me through everything I've done. What have you had to do to get ready? Um, just a lot of practice. That's mainly, yeah. Like eat, sleep, practice. Yeah. Basically. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. So there's competitions around the world. The biggest one is Worlds on Oahu at Polynesian Culture Center. Okay. We have a lot of fire knife dancers here, especially Kaisen, the younger boy that was dancing. We're training him to get ready for the competitions. So, hey, why don't we just put one here? You know? So that's why I, I, I started the competition here to give the younger generations that experience to be on stage to be in a competition before hitting that big stage because the pressure at the big stages is a whole lot different than we got here so Teva's gonna be saturday and sunday poafi saturday night yeah so you get tahiti hawaii and samoa the polynesian triangle The Po'afi Kauai Fire Knife Competition is also a sister competition to the Burnout Suicide Competition that was originally created as a way to bring awareness to mental health. For more information on the event, you can go to hevaikauai.com or kauaifestivals.com. This week's photo was submitted by local business owner, Jonathan Fisher. He owns and operates Kauai Sup, so it makes perfect sense that his photo would be of the majestic Lailua River. You can view more amazing pictures like this on Instagram, at Kauai Sup. Mahalo for your submission, Jonathan. And if you would like to show off your view from work, go to hoike.org and scroll down to submit your photo. Then be sure to tune in next week because you may get to see your picture on our podcast and, of course, right behind me in the studio. All right, Kauai, that's all the Hoike we have for you this week. I'm Trisha Allen wishing you love and aloha.
Hoike's president and CEO is Allegra Gaines. Administrative assistant, Leko Someda. Production and education services by Roger Olson. Production and IT services by Max Richardson. With news and events producer, Trisha Allen. Hoike's board of directors include Chair Adam Reversi, Vice Chair Lexi Jones, Secretary Nathaniel Evslin, and Treasurer Jackie Kaina. Additional directors on the board, Leah Iwohi, Lori Barrett, Rod Green, Teak Rubiano, and Taylor Young.